Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, and today I'm talking about all of the watery books that I read in 2020. So this video will have three sections. Section one is ocean, section two is coastal, island, lake, and dam, and section three is sounds like the ocean. I'm going to do my least favorite in each category to my most favorite. So let's start it out with ocean, my least favorite, this was Deep Light by Francis Harding. Two boys live in this world where there were once massive sea gods, and then they had a civil war, destroyed themselves, and pieces of these gods are on the bottom of the ocean. We are following two boys who get into trouble when mining some of this undersea godware, and one boy is starting to physically change while the other boy is dealing with the legal ramifications of this act. I gave this book three stars, mostly because of the bathyspheres, the submersibles, and the submarines, which were often mentioned throughout the book. Next up, I have The Diving Bells by Lucy Wood. This is a sea, ocean, coastal themed short story collection. I found a lot of the stories in here to be quite forgettable. However, there were two that I really loved. One is about a woman whose body is slowly turning to stone um, as she is becoming one of these stone figures that looks out into the harbor. And the other story I really liked was about a woman whose husband goes missing. So she pays for people to drop her down in a diving bell so that she can hunt for her husband turned merman. I gave this three stars. Next up, let's talk about The Pisces by Melissa Broder. This is following a woman who has a severely bad breakup. She goes to house sit and pet sit for her sister on the coast and she is dealing with her emotional baggage as well as depression and anxiety, as well as meeting up with a mysterious swimmer at night who may or may not be a merman or a figment of her imagination. I gave this three and a half stars. Next, let's talk about The Deep by Rivers Solomon. This one is about the historian who is the memory keeper of her water-dwelling race who are ancestors of those who were thrown overboard during the transatlantic slave trade. Um, she has a lot of anxiety and she cannot perform this year's ritual, which is to basically regurgitate all the memories so that everyone else can experience them for a few days and then she'll take them all back upon herself. So instead she flees and things go from there. I ended up giving this four stars. So next up is Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier. This follows Mary Anning, who is a amateur fossil hunter along the English coastline. Um, she hunts fossils to sell them and make money. She kind of teams up with Elizabeth Philpot, who is a bored London spinster who has recently moved to this seaside town. Um, and together they hunt fossils. Mary Anning was the first person to discover the ichthyosaur and it kind of shakes up the scientific community. I thought it was quite interesting and I gave it four stars. The fossils were by far the most interesting part for me. I love fossils in general and sea fossils especially. Next, let's talk about Your Heart is the Sea by Nikita Gill. This is a sea-themed poetry collection about disintegration and building yourself back up. So I'll just show you kind of the themes of the poems. So this is kind of a good guide. It says the beginning, the wonder, the worship, the survival, the defiance, the acceptance, the descent, and the anguish. I just really love this. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did um, because I also tried to read other Nikita Gills and didn't get on well with them. But this one I thought was excellent and I gave it four and a half stars. But I would have to say that my favorite oceany book uh, in this category is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is set in a massive fantasy world which works on bone shard magic. So everyone in the kingdom on their seventh birthday has to give the bone behind their ear to the emperor. And he uses that bone to create constructs, which are huge beings, which work off of the bones magic, slowly depleting the owner of their life force. Um, and we are following Lin, who is the emperor's daughter. And she was really sick in her youth and she can't remember what happened to her. And she is trying to figure out her place. But not only is she one point of view, there's another point of view, which is a queer, 
uh, soldier, like battalion leader, who is trying to rescue their kidnapped lover. Um, there is also a sailor who is sailing when, when some of the islands sink suddenly, and he is seafaring, trying to find his lost love, and also dealing with a very weird beast which has hijacked a ride on his ship. So although all of the narratives aren't set on the ocean, this is heavily themed on islands um, with seafaring in between. And I gave this four and a half stars. I thought it was really excellent. Now we are to part two, which is coastal island, lake, and dam. So let's start off with my least favorite in this category, which is definitely Seven Years of Darkness by Yu Jong Jong, who is a Korean writer. Um, I really don't recommend this book. I found it painfully slow. Um, it's about a boy whose dad commits a heinous act by flooding a dam and killing people in the village below. And you find out why this has happened and who has been stalking the boy since. Um, I gave it two stars. Moving right along, let's talk about Lion Cross Point by Masatsugu Ono. This is about a young 10 year old boy named Takaru who had a very rough childhood. So he has been taken from his mother and is going to be raised on this island. So he is slowly acclimating to island life and the slower pace and you're getting kind of slow drips of what had happened to him throughout his childhood. Overall, I found it to be a very quiet island novel. And I gave it three and a half stars. Next up is His Bloody Project by Graham McRae Burnett. Um, this one d is dealing with a 17 year old crofter who commits a triple murder in the Scottish Highlands right next to the island of Skye. So the entire community is right next to the seaside and you get beautiful descriptions of the scenery and also mention of working on the seashore. But the majority of this is about the triple murder and the ensuing court case. I finished it relatively recently and I gave it three stars. Another one which is on the seashore but not really about the sea is Damaged Goods by Talia Hibbert. This is number 1.5 in the Ravenswood series um, of romances. So if you only know Talia Hibbert because of the Brown Sisters series, I highly recommend you to read Ravenswood. Personally, I think it is a better series. I don't know if that's contentious, but I really enjoy it. This one is about a pregnant woman who goes to her hometown and is staying in her family house on the shoreline and she is re recuperating from an abusive relationship and she meets up with a childhood friend of hers and he kind of helps her through the pregnancy and protects her. It's a romance, it's very sweet, and um, I really liked their scenes like walking on the beach. It was adorable. Next up, I want to mention Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. Uh, this is following Mila who went through the foster care system and when she ages out, she is lucky enough to be offered an internship, a position working as a teacher at this remote cliffside farm. It's very foggy and it's right near the cliffs. You can kind of hear the ocean. She is dealing with her own past trauma and the ghosts of her past and when she gets to the farm she realizes that the ghosts of the past might actually be literal. So this is kind of a ghost story. It's kind of a quiet novel about found family and I ended up giving it three and a half stars. Next up let's talk Peter Pan retelling. So this is Lost Boy by Christina Henry. Peter Pan is stealing kids from their world, bringing them through kind of a portal into Neverland and it is an island and he does have battles and hijinks against the pirates which are on the ship and also along the shore with uh, crocodiles. And this is a much darker retelling than any other retelling I've ever read. Christina Henry is an amazing fairy tale reteller with some horror elements thrown in and I loved it and I gave it four stars. Next up I want to talk about Hold Back the Tide by Melinda Salisbury. This is about a town which is right near a lake reservoir and the the town is run off of this paper mill that is using the lake to create the products and we're following Alva whose father is the water monitor for the reservoir. Tragedy strikes and things are coming out of the forest near the water that shouldn't be. So this definitely isn't in the water but this is definitely themed around issues that arise from the water. If you read it you'll find out what I mean. 
I gave this four stars. My second favorite in this category is The Machine by James Smith. This is following Beth, whose husband returned from war with PTSD and the government offered them black boxes. So the black boxes could take out the bad memories and put in good stock memories, only once they went through the procedure, the government realized, whoa, this is too dangerous. People are, people are acting uh, really violently, so they stopped it. Alva decides that she's going to use the black boxes to put all the memories back in her husband and create him again. Um, I read this for my Frankenstein retellings, and this took me by complete surprise. Um, and the C element in here is that they are along the coast, um, and as she is going from work and through the town, uh, she's always talking about the ocean imagery and um, swimming and watching the delinquent youths like jumping off the cliff. Uh, and yeah, so there are some ocean themes in here, although it's not the main focus. And I gave this four stars. Now we are to my favorite one in this category. This is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is following Linus, who is an orphanage investigator, and he is sent to one of the most dangerous orphanages, which houses um, very powerful and dangerous magical children. Uh, and he is interacting with the children and also the caretaker. It kind of is the perfect balance between a little bit of dark, a lot of sweet stuff, some queer elements, and just some great imagination. The orphanage is set on this little island um, on the sea, on the Cerulean Sea, as the title says. I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. Now we are to the last section, which is Sounds Like Water. Uh, these are books that have titles that sound like they should be oceans themed, but they are not. So I have two to talk about. This is Sound the Deep Waters, um, women's romantic poetry in the Victorian age. This was given to me by my aunt. I did read it, I did enjoy it, but the majority of the poems in here are not ocean themed, even though it says sound the deep waters. I think they're definitely going for the metaphor of, if you don't know, in the ocean, when you send down like a depth gauge, it's called sounding. So it's literally like sounding the depths is checking out what lies beneath the surface, uh, not literally water. This is not literally about water, but I thought I would mention the title. And the last one today is The Sea and the Poison by Shisako Endo. This is a Japanese classic about Japanese surgeons who perform live vivisections on captured American soldiers. And as you can imagine, this doesn't have much to do with the ocean. Instead, um, The Sea and the Poison is talking about what experiments they ran on the prisoners. So the sea, one of the things they injected saline, which is salt water, into them. So this is more about talking about like the actual torture slash vivisections than any sort of ocean imagery. Um, but I just thought it would be cool to mention those two. Um, and that's all I have for you today. So I figured this would be a great video to film every January um, because I do love to read ocean books and I love to talk about them. <laughs> and if you have any for me, please let me know down below. I hope that you are having a merry January and I will talk to you in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye.